Stay where you are. I'm sending someone up to meet you. Only a few people get to venture outside. 
Listen very closely and do as I say. Your life depends on it. Hand over everything you're carrying. Weapons, ammo, clothes, armor, everything. I want you stripped down to your underwear. I've told you what to do. Strip off your clothes and equipment or face summary execution. Will you comply? Take it all off and hand it to me. Then come inside and through the door at the rear of the chamber. Paladin Ramos is waiting for you. I usually to trade for food. Where did you learn that password? And tell the truth, because I'll know if you're lying. I'm the one asking the questions right now, and you still haven't answered me. I suggest you start doing so. An interesting story. It may even be true. Under normal circumstances, your story wouldn't make any difference. You'd be dead already. Lucky for you, probably. Elder McNamara wants to meet you, so follow me closely or you'll be killed. I've been informed that you bring us ill tidings, stranger. Care to elaborate? That is sad news indeed, and I thank you for making your way here to convey it to us. But now the issue remains that an outsider knows our location. You took an extreme risk in coming here. My policy towards trespassers has not been lenient. The security of this bunker is my foremost concern, and I take pains to minimize our exposure topside. For this reason, I might be interested in contracting with an outsider, who can accomplish certain tasks, some basic, some a bit more... involved. An NCR Ranger has begun to set up post in one of the other bunkers up top, for example. I want him driven off. Understood? Yes, we could kill him easily enough. But sometimes you can learn a great deal by observing people. Both enemies and friends. Which is why it will be very interesting to observe how you choose to deal with the situation, and decide which you are, enemy or friend. Do we understand one another? Very well. I'll be interested to see how thoroughly and efficiently you carry out your mission. Paladin Ramos will escort you back to the bunker's entrance and set you loose. Notice that I said loose, not free. You are not free to carry the secret of this bunker's location beyond Hidden Valley, until I'm convinced that you're capable and dependable. To underscore this point, you'll be fitted with an explosive collar. Wander off and it will detonate. Focus on your mission, and you'll be fine. You'll find your equipment in the chest to your right. Don't bother coming back until you've dealt with the Ranger.
Thought you'd sneak up on me, you filthy powder ganger? Huh. <laughs> Got some stones on you, son. I like that. What can I do for you? Dobbs is my name. I'm an NCR ranger operating out of Camp McCarran, north of here. Redding man by birth, though. Well, I thought I might set up a safe house in one of the bunkers here. Between the remote location and the dust storms, I figured it was ideal. Of course, it seems a lot less remote since you showed up. Plus, I haven't been able to get my radio working. And a safe house is no good without one. I reckon I'll stick around a while, patrol for troublemakers, see if I can get that radio working. Criminal scum that have infested this region, attacking caravans and regular folk just passing through. The dangerous ones are roamers, though there's another group that mostly stays put over at the prison southwest of here. Or so they did, till NCR Brass finally mustered up enough troops to take out the trash. Wish I could have been there. Standard practice. Rangers operate on our own most of the time, and that's how we like it. Usually we call in our positions to McCarran to be relayed to other rangers, but I can handle myself. I'm sure as hell not gonna lose any sleep on account of a goddamn broken down radio, but it will shorten my stay if I can't fix it. Oh, and in your expert opinion, why would that be? You've seen that with your own two eyes? God damn. I knew Cook's gang passed through these parks about that frequently, but I didn't know they hold up here. Be a rude awakening to find 15 of those merciless bastards looking down at me snoozing on my bedroll. Yep, I'd be better off setting up an ambush along one of their routes to catch stragglers. Thanks for the information. You may have saved my life. Sorry, but I've got a long hike ahead of me. You take care. Stand back from the door. The Elder's eager to hear your report.
How did you resolve the situation with the Ranger? Gone. Why did he leave? And what makes you think he won't be back? Yes, you exploited his fear of powder gangers very effectively. The collar includes a microphone, you see. Part of the test. He'll keep his distance, setting ambushes, never suspecting that these bunkers house something far more dangerous to him than criminals. Well played. Since you completed your assigned task, I will allow you to come and go from the bunker freely. So let's get that collar off you. There, that's better, I hope. Now that we have that bit of unpleasantness out of the way, there is a matter that I would like to discuss with you. Stop by the command room when you can. Oh, and bear in mind, if you end up betraying us, we will know it. And there will be no mercy. Your presence here, let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. Normally, that would have fallen under my jurisdiction, but the Elder thought it provided a good test for you, so I backed off. Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. Fine by me. Bye. Doc Schuler is a lifesaver. I was heard in training the other day, and she fixed me right up. What I wish to discuss with you can wait for once I get settled in the command room, Outsider. Why is your friend there glaring at me like that? Did I bump into him or something? Doc Schuler is a lifesaver. I was heard in training the other day and she fixed me right up. When you first showed up on our doorstep, I'll admit at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of great use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here. Though no, we will be keeping an eye on you. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently, and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. While that is disheartening news, there remains hope that the other two patrols may still be found alive. I'm glad I can count on you. Oh, and one other thing. 
The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. I've given the order that you be given access to some of the equipment our scouts and patrols have scavenged over the years. You won't be allowed to purchase any prohibited equipment, but hopefully some of what's available will prove useful to you. Found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? I can spare a little time. What did you want to talk about? That is this base's defensive system. It serves as camouflage and masks all entry and exit from the bunker. We use it to hide our patrols and supply runners, though we still send such out at night to be extra safe. It's a protective measure that was enacted after our defeat at Helios. The NCR was hot on our heels and we wouldn't have survived another encounter. It was decided that we would stay quiet for a time, heal the wounded, and try to come up with a new strategy. However, after we had fully recuperated, our first scouting measures showed that the NCR's presence in this region had only increased in our absence. There are now more than five times the number of NCR troops in the area as when we fought them, and we have half the number we did at Helios. And so the lockdown has been extended. To go outside would be the death of us all. We have some personnel that are allowed to travel on the surface. They trade for what we need and occasionally drop off what they acquire. We make sure that they only enter or leave the bunker while the sandstorm is active, to avoid detection. Bye. So, you're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter, and I think we might be able to help each other out. I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble, and he's at the center of it. Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? Why should you trust the Elder? I'd recommend listening to both of us and choosing whom to trust for yourself. So are you willing to listen? As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by. And many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations. And all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. Of course I have, many times in fact. The Elder has an open door policy and will listen to advice on any subject save this one. He refuses to see that our isolation is slowly weakening us. Aside from being our duty, going out on missions is what kept us strong. And because he fails to see that, he must be replaced. I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters, so they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you, and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? If I become Elder, the lockdown will be lifted, and we'll once again be able to send patrols out into the wastes. We'll become powerful again. And when that happens, it will be good to have the Brotherhood as an ally. Good enough? That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there.
What is it, Outsider? Have you discovered anything? If you must. It's a travesty is what it is. Every second we sit on our hands down here is another second that we're not fulfilling our sworn duty. It's not that I dislike the Elder, but I strongly disapprove of his current style of leadership. We're safe, yes, but at what cost? After lifting the lockdown, the first thing I'd do is send scouts out to recon the area. We need to know what's going on out there. Next, I'd resume patrols in the near vicinity, and begin sending search teams out to the spots the scouts reported were relatively safe. It's standard procedure when a chapter relocates to an area. But standard procedure wasn't our last Elder's style, either. Elijah was a strange one. His even becoming Elder was highly questionable, seeing as how he was a scribe. Typically, only paladins are eligible. But an exception was made in his case on account of him being a genius. Unfortunately, whatever scientific acumen he had didn't extend to tactics. Trying to defend Helios was a blunder of the worst kind, and many brothers lost their lives because of it. Many of the senior paladins, myself included, advised him to fight a retreating action, but he refused to budge. He said he almost had it working. We never did find out exactly what he was talking about. When the perimeter was finally overrun, the Elder had simply vanished. Helios was the worst goddamn action I've seen in a long, long career of fighting. Later. Doc Schuler is a lifesaver. I was heard in training the other day and she fixed me right up. Barca takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? It takes a little getting used to, doesn't it? Bunker takes a little getting used to, doesn't it?
Welcome to the 188 Slop and Shop. Like our slogan says, <laughs> it's better than nothing. You bet. Samuel Kerr at your service. Me and my daughter Michelle run this fine establishment. We came here from Prim about a month past. Doesn't look like much, but it's one hell of a location. Michelle and I ran a little shop in Prim till the prison break north of town spoiled it for everyone. Goddamn convicts just about shut down I-15. When traffic dried up, we took to our heels to find us some customers. I'm not one to sit around waiting to get saved, and Michelle ain't neither. When 15 shut down, 95 became the route NCR citizens used to get to the Strip, or limp back home, after the Strip's drained them of caps. We get them coming and going. Coming, the suckers flush with caps they saved to gamble on the Strip. And going, the same folks, but now they're losers who'll trade you the shirt off their backs so they don't starve before they make it back home. Add in the troopers marching back and forth from McCarran and the dam, and well, let's just say we don't miss Prim. Hey. Feeling thirsty? Welcome to the 188 Slop and Shop. How can I help you? Name's Michelle. My dad and me run this store. His name's Samuel. I take the day shift and he takes nights. We came here about a month ago, when Prim went to hell on account of the prison break north of there. Found a bin to call home and set up shop. There's more to the 188 than meets the eye. Troops move back and forth on 93 all the time, and 95 is how NCR folks come and go from Vegas. No shortage of customers, so long as Legion raids south of here don't get worse anyways. You do know these old roads were numbered, right? We're standing where the 95 and 93 meet, and 95 plus 93 equals 188. Not much. I hear some folks got killed down by Nelson, or was it Novak? I don't know. If they come up this way, me and Dad will go someplace else. Later. Hey, no offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Huh. Well, in that case, I take it back. You look pretty good, given the circumstances. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker, if you want to get technical. I think it sounds more interesting my way. But I'm not there much anymore. I'm usually out here picking up food and supplies for my family. Whatever they need. Yeah, I'm not worried. They can handle themselves. But somebody has to get the groceries, know what I mean? And actually these days, I think they'd rather have me out here anyway. But that's a whole other story. So listen, can I ask you something on the level? I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? And? You think? Well, good then. That puts me a little more at ease. Hey. So, where are you headed, anyway? Just wherever the wind takes you, huh? I like that. Keeps things interesting. I'll be honest. You're the first person I've run across out here that looks like he can really handle himself. There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Maybe we could travel together. Help each other out.
nowhere in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world, looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. It's a big family. Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Aw, you really know how to make a girl feel like a stray cat. But, okay, my offer stands, if we run into each other again. Hey, I want to thank you for bringing me to Bitter Springs. Things seem clearer now. If that's what you think. All right. Guess I'll be around Novak for a while longer until I figure out what I want to do with myself. See you around. Couldn't get enough of talking to me the first time, huh? Good. I'd hoped you'd come around. Shall we? Now you're talking. One thing you should know first, though. I asked you about the Brotherhood because I'm one of them. I know, I know, but I had to know how you react when I told you. We have made a lot of enemies. You still okay bringing me along? Sure, just don't ever ask me if your outfit makes you look fat. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? What's up? He was dead when I got there. It pays like ass, but it's hard to get other work with my skill set. What do you want to know? <laughs> Good question. These days, it's hard to say. Once upon a time, it was about technology, controlling it so it couldn't destroy us again. Energy weapons and power armor are usually tops on our list, although I appreciate anything that's vintage. But that all seems so limited now. We haven't grown or adapted, and now we're stuck in a hole, not carrying out our mission. More sexual favors than I can even count. I am still tired from it. No, actually, you're born into it. My parents, their parents, so on. When you're young, you can choose to leave, but it's home, so most people don't. We don't take on new members, really. You can do the math on our long-term prospects based on that point. I keep hoping we'll change that. I'm a procurement specialist. Like I said, it's basically grocery shopping, except sometimes the groceries are scavenged parts and arcane technology. The elder who brought us to the Mojave, Father Elijah, usually had me looking for these old memory units, but he'd never tell me what they were for. Nowadays, I'm usually sent to do business with traders at places like the 188, but sometimes I think it's just to keep me out of everyone's hair. I know sometimes I sound like I don't, I know. But there's something that still rings true to me about our code. There's an honor to it. We're protecting people, even if it's from themselves. It's a good cause. We just lose sight of the big picture sometimes, treat all our practices with the same sacredness. Ah, the Codex. If it's in there, we have to abide it. If it's not, it's not important. It documents our history, too. Part of what scribes like me do is update it. Hmm. I wonder... Nah, they'd probably catch it if I rewrote the Founder's axioms. No, no. We only protect people from themselves, and only in the sense that we don't let them have the really good pre-war toys. And sometimes it's more like we protect ourselves from them and hope to outlive them and become humanity's sole heirs. We've had people go rogue, though, and start helping people. One chapter had a small civil war over it. We take our isolationism seriously. He was our elder when we came east. A wizard with technology, really. His mind just worked that way, naturally. I learned a lot from him. But he started having disagreements with the other elders. The Brotherhood's interest is in old technology. He wanted to explore developing new tech. And there were other ways he wanted to push, 
other weapons, ones with ethics questions attached. Rather than deal with him, they sent him east. Darn it! I had some spectacular answers coming too. I like long walks in the desert and candlelit metal workshops. I like punching things, but sometimes shooting things just has to do. Yeah, I've been taking things apart and putting them back together since before I said my first word. You want to build something? Talk to me, and we can do it right there on the spot. Workbenches are from novices. Who knows? I might even be able to show you a Brotherhood trick or two. My favorite subject. I want... a dress. Yeah, a good one. Something elegant and classy, you know? But still stylish. Something that's eye-catching and sexy, but also says, don't fuck with me. I keep hoping I'll come across some old world designer gown when I'm scavenging, but it never happens. Maybe I should move back to California. Hey, you try getting a date wearing scribe robes. Might as well be wearing sweatpants. I just like them, you know? They make you feel like a woman. Those ladies before the war, they knew what they were doing. Can I make it up? I would say he was my tutor, but that doesn't cover it. After my parents passed, he looked after me. The whole brotherhood brought me up, really, but he made sure of it. I never had a grandfather, not that I knew, anyway. But Elijah was in some ways what I'd imagined a grandfather to be. It was by his request, actually. He cleared it with the other elders. Somehow. They sent him to look into the dam. There was a time when I'd have begged to follow. Watch him at work. He did. For years, he fought with the council. Taught me to question our direction. Meanwhile, he'd become more out of touch than all of them. On our way east, he demanded we stop at Helios 1 to examine it. While we were there, we received word that the NCR had taken the dam. He was furious. Called it children playing with a bomb. But he was mad because we'd lost his power. What we'd use it for? He didn't even care. They're cautious. When they discover something, they respect it, learn its limits, consider how to preserve it. Used to drive Father Elijah crazy. He liked to learn limits too, but only so he could push them. That's not to excuse the other elders, though. They all covet technology for its own sake. Some are just more fanatical than others. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help him. He just didn't listen. And the idea that people talk back to him... <sighs> if he could have made the Brotherhood act like machines, ordering them around with the push of a button, he would have. Elijah could look at an old device and immediately understand what made it work. And he could see its potential, where it fit with other technology. It's not something he could teach, but he tried with me. Some of it stuck. But that's what he taught me. You ask what I learned from him. I learned what I don't want to become. In the end, there was just him and his vision. Nothing and no one else. Yeah. I miss him. I don't know. Last time anyone saw him was in the battle at Helios 1. I wasn't there. He gave orders to hold the plant until he could be reactivated. But he ran out of time. The NCR overran it. Everyone thought he was dead. But I got a note from him at a comm station. That's how he liked to talk, even to me. He wasn't good at face-to-face. -face. It was... strange. Even for Father Elijah. He's always been unstable, but this was something else. I don't want to say delusional, but I don't know what else to call it. The only thing familiar about it was the signature. He said the Brotherhood was doomed, but that he'd return, save us. But the way he said it, I don't know. Said he'd return with one of the greatest treasures of the old world, make the Mojave like it was meant to be. Wipe the slate clean. Like what? Just my parents, but they haven't been around for a long time. Dad was a paladin, Mom was a scribe. They died in the same battle, trying to hold off the NCR from... something. I don't remember what it was. 
Guess it seemed important at the time. Like what? Ever been nosy? I was, once. We were pretty young, but I like to think it was love. She left the Brotherhood. Wanted to put some distance between herself and her parents. Since our membership isn't open to outsiders, some members think that obligates all of us to procreate. You can guess which camp her parents belong to. No. Couldn't bring myself to leave everyone else behind. Couldn't convince her to stay, either. I'd hoped love would be enough to influence her decision, but it wasn't. We were both too stubborn. I don't know where she is now, but I'm sure she's moved on. I still think about her, though. Once in a while. Like what? If you take trying to keep me as far away from Hidden Valley as possible because I ask too many difficult questions as a sign of respect, oh yeah. That's not to say I don't get along with them. I just think they don't know what to do with me sometimes. Like what? No more specific. I just know there are a lot of groups who are actually doing well for themselves out here. I want to understand how and why. See them at work. Ooh. Got any juicy gossip? Step into my office. This better not... Sure. He's one of the hotel managers on the Strip. He comes up in the news now and then. Him and the other chairman run the Tops. It's one of the nicer hotels. Or so I hear. Elder McNamara wouldn't shell out for a passport for me, so I've actually never been to the Strip. Why do people get so cheap when they get old? Well, when two people really love each other, you really don't know this stuff yet? Yep, it's your typical city layout. Rich people in a gated community surrounded by extreme poverty. House gave the area around the Strip to the locals, but he has no interest in it, so he ignores it entirely. It just needs new management. I'd love to see the Brotherhood do it, but since the Codex doesn't say clean up Freeside, no one listens to me. Bunch of sticklers. Ooh, do I get a prize if I answer right? I'm worried they'll be the death of the Brotherhood. They take what they want, we defend our interests to the death. But there's a handful of us, and tens or hundreds of thousands of them. So, it's not going to end well. Last time we clashed, we lost a lot of people. Retreated to our bunker. Now we're afraid to even move around during the day. I was told we wouldn't be tested on this. Silliest dress band of raping, slaving marauders you'll see east of California. I'll say that. Where's that touch of old world class? Although, I hear the soldiers mount each other as much as they mount their women, so maybe they did keep a little something from the Empire. No such privilege for the women, though. Figures. So, to answer your question, they're a bunch of hypocritical jerkwads. It's a word. A lifetime supply of fancy lad snack cakes, revenge against my enemies, and world peace. In that order. Let's. Hey. You a merc? Because you don't look like a prospector. Hell yes, sir. Well, not officially. Not anymore. They mustered me out a year ago. Administrative discharge. Staff Sergeant, 3rd Platoon, Bravo Company. I was at the dam when the Legion hit us three years back. That was a shitstorm, and don't let anybody tell you different. The brass try to play it down, but most of them were back at McCarran. I didn't. My CO ordered me to flog a couple deserters, and I told him to eat shit. So they kicked me out for insubordination. Those kids didn't desert. They just got liquored up on the strip and missed roll call. I don't know what else the brass expects. Half these kids don't get more than two weeks of training before they ship them out here. 
Going home didn't feel right. Not with those savages camped on the other side of the river, sharpening their knives. And I still get to see my old platoon when they pass through here. Make sure the new CEO is treating them right, and sneak them extra ammo. Anyway, I was always complaining about the standard issue gear. The new kids don't even get body armor. Can you believe that? Vegas is bleeding us dry. We're tossing caps at a hundred different problems, while Caesar bides his time and lets us wear ourselves out. This war is gonna bankrupt the NCR, unless we finish off the Legion fast and dirty. We shouldn't be perched up at the dam. We ought to be crossing the Colorado and sticking a boot up Caesar's ass. Sure, no problem.
you want to get fucked up, Gamora's the place to go. Wish I was there now. <laughs>